want to take a few minutes and just continue to explore this question about word problems in Singapore mathematics and really why they're so valuable. Uh, and I want to invoke kind of a, just a, a classic example here. Um, so I want to think about what it would take to solve this problem, how we might solve it, um, and why that's going to be a valuable thought process for students. Um, so um, I'm going to use a method here called bar modeling, uh, which is pretty ingrained and uh, into the Singapore mathematics method. If you want some more information on that, there are other videos on the website uh, that really dive into bar modeling. But hopefully you can see the value of bar modeling in this problem and how it might help a student. Um, but I want to compare this to what we just would happen if you didn't actually do this word problem um, and what, what opportunities you'd be sacrificing for students um, and what thoughts they wouldn't get to uh, be challenged to have different skills they wouldn't be challenged to build. So let's think about what it would take to solve this problem. Um, first of all, this isn't a very easy one, right? Uh, it looks pretty easy on the surface. Krista has $16, Jessica has 11 more dollars than Krista. Um, how much money do they have altogether? Uh, looks reasonably easy, but actually to a, to a third grader, right? Uh, and that's the textbook that I pulled this out of. This is actually a very difficult problem. This is uh, what we might call a two-step problem. Um, a lot of second, third graders, maybe even some of you, would try to solve this by saying, ah, I see the number 16, I see the number 11, I see the word all together, let's put $16 and $11 together, we get $27, let's call it a day. Um, and really, that's not the right answer to this problem here. Uh, but also, uh, the main thing here is trying to get students to think beyond just these key words or these clues, right? Um, that's not really how we want to engage with word problems is thinking about keywords and clues, right? Really what we want to do is to engage with the problem in a, in a pictorial fashion, right? Um, and so I might try to draw something here, right? Uh, so I, and I could start just by going slowly. So the one, if you're teaching this, um, and there are other videos that are also going to help with, with, with this, but if you're teaching this, go slowly, go step by step, go, you know, and, and draw as you're going along. I like to say, read for a little bit and then stop and then draw a little bit and then read and stop and draw, etc. And so that's what I'm going to do here, right? If, I, if Krista has $16, what I can do is I can say Krista, right, has $16 here. Right? And what I've done is I've taken the words here and I've translated them into a picture, right? Jessica has 11 more dollars than Krista, right? And there are all sorts of questions you can ask the teacher around this moment, right? Do I need to draw Jessica's bar? bigger or smaller, right? Um, we can clearly see it's going to be bigger. How much bigger? Should I just draw it to here? Should I draw all the way across the board, right? I'm trying to get students to estimate how big it's going to draw. They don't need to get it exact, but just trying to model that in somewhere around there, right? Um, and then figure out where I can draw the 11, right? The 11 actually doesn't go in, it doesn't apply to the whole thing, right? Chris doesn't have $11, but Krista has 11 more dollars here. All right, and sometimes you can even a little line there to show that Krista has $11, right? And then to finish this off, right, how much money do they have all together, right? We finish off every bar model by thinking about a question mark, right? And the question mark here is going to belong over here because I want to know how much money they have all together, right? And so what you can see here is this is pretty clearly a two-step process, right? It's going to be a two-step problem. I can't figure out how much they have all together until I figure out how much Jessica has, right? And so I can start by doing that, start by saying, What's this? And now you might get a student doing something like 16 plus 11 over here, getting 27. Um, and then we might actually then progress and figure out the question mark here, where we would do uh, 16 plus 27, giving us $43, right? And we might finish off just by saying they have $43 together, right? What I want to do for just a few seconds here, um, first of all, hopefully you can see the value of bar modeling into taking the most difficult parts of this problem, right? Why shouldn't I just add 16 and 11 and be done with it? What operations do I choose? How do I know to do two steps in this problem? Once I've drawn this picture, it's abundantly clear why I need to go and do these things, right? value this pictorial approach that Singapore mathematics has. But really, let's think about if students were only ever challenged to do something like this. Right? And you'll see some mathematics curricula just keep, keep hammering home these kind of questions to students, right? Uh, without any context, without any word problem, without any, right? I'm not actually challenged to do the thinking 
that I am when I'm actually given a word problem. I'm not challenged to model. I'm not challenged to translate. I'm not, all I'm challenged to do is to manipulate symbols, right? Uh, this encourages students, challenges students, gives students the opportunity to do more than just symbols, right? Get them thinking about how do I take something that is a real world problem, turn it into a model, right? And then come up with an answer that I know makes sense, right? And if you can ask all sorts of great questions about this as a teacher, right? Why does $43 make sense? Why doesn't $27 make sense, right? If Jessica has $11 more than Krista, how much money does Jessica have, right? You can think of all these questions that you can ask as a teacher in a word problem that you can't ask so much in these problems, right? These problems have their own great set of questions and we should still teach students how to do this, right? But it's not gonna ever take the place of a word problem. A word problem is gonna challenge the students in a unique fashion. Yes, it is difficult. Yes, it is time consuming. Uh, but given the tools of bar modeling, it unlocks some opportunities for students that they're not gonna get anywhere else.